Here I'm going to present a different way of thinking about the quantum numbers that uses a tree format. At the root or base of the tree, we can think of the principal quantum numbers. n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3, etc. And I'm just going to look at the first three shells here. So the principal quantum number is kind of at the base or the root or the trunk, if you like, of the tree. The next more specific quantum number is L, the orbital quantum number, and L is constrained by one of these rules of the quantum numbers for hydrogen. The rule here is that N must be greater than L, or L must be less than N, and L can take on values of 0, 1, 2, etc. N can take on values of 1, 2, 3, etc., all the way up to infinity, right? So when N is equal to 1, well, then the only possible L value here is L equals 0. That's the only allowed L value that's less than 1, right? And we can, of course, still have L equals 0 at the n equals 2 level, but now we're also able to have L equal to 1 because 1 is less than 2, right? And so L equals 1 fits the rule when n equals 2. For n equals 3, we can have L equals 0, L equals 1, or L equals 2. So, three branches, or three subshells, if you like, for the n equals 3 level. The next more specific quantum number is m sub L, the magnetic quantum number. And the rule for m sub L is that the absolute value of m sub L must be less than or equal to L. So within each of these red branches, we can think about the possible allowed values of m sub L. For L equals 0, the only allowed value is m sub L equals 0, because the only number whose absolute value is equal to 0 is 0, and no positive or negative number will work. In fact, since this rule has nothing to do with n, the principal quantum number, we can go ahead and immediately write for all the other L equals 0 branches that the only allowed value of m sub L is 0. So we can do that at the n equals 2 level, and down here at the n equals 3 level, the only possible allowed value is m sub L equals 0 in this case. And you probably recognize this orbital, if you've seen this before, as the 1s, 2s, and 3s orbital within each shell. We can play the same game for L equals 1 and see that m sub L can now take on three values, negative 1, 0, and 1. And that holds true no matter what the value of n is. So for L equals 1 in the n equals 3 shell, we still have three allowed m sub l's, negative 1, 0, and 1. And you may recognize these as, for example, the 2px, 2py, and 2pz orbitals. m sub l dictates the direction. Down here we have the 3px, 3py, and 3pz orbitals. And don't worry too much about x correlates with negative 1 and y with 0 and etc. because those assignments are arbitrary. For L equals 2, now we have five possible allowed values of m sub L. We have m sub L equals negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, or 2. And these are what we call the 3D orbitals. There are five of these, and they're called 3D xy, 3D yz, 3D xz, 3D x squared minus y squared, and 3D z squared. And again, even though it's not as simple as x, y, and z, notice that m sub l is just dictating the orientation of the orbital in space and not necessarily its shape. To some small degree with the d orbitals, it does dictate shape, but mostly m sub l is related to the direction of the orbital while its shape is dictated by the l value. So hopefully this tree format helps you see that we can systematically generate the possible orbitals within a shell by thinking about the rules that govern the quantum numbers, specifically this idea that n must be greater than l and that the absolute value of m sub l must be less than or equal to l.